So with that said, let me jump into the project. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to grab this water closet. And it doesn't have um, connectors at this point, but if I go uh, to the uh, family type style of box here, uh, there is not, um, there is no information about the diameters of uh, the pipes that either come in or out of this water closet. And most of the times your plumbing fixture schedule will need to have those parameters and you will want to have them. So first of all, we are going to uh, come here and create a new parameter. And when you create a new parameter, one of the things that I want you to be aware of is this part. And always read your dialog boxes. A family parameter, when you create a parameter, and this is a reporting parameter, when you create a parameter in your project, very important to understand that a family parameter cannot appear in schedule or in schedules or tax. Okay. So I'm going to create a parameter that is going to be called cold water radius. Uh, when you're creating parameters, notice that you can choose your discipline. So I'm going to choose a piping discipline and I'm going to choose pipe size. I'm going to make it a type parameter because uh, plumbing fixtures by type, the difference to them by type is basically that um, radius okay and i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click a set, create the second one and this is going to be called sanitary uh, radius and again it's going to be a type parameter it's going to be a uh, from the discipline piping and it's going to be a uh, pipe size and I'm going to leave the group under uh, dimensions, and that is where that parameter is going to be organized in the type properties dialog box of uh, this uh, family. So uh, here in dimensions, now I have the two parameters. So the cold water radius is going to be a half an inch. I'm going to lock this guy, and the sanitary radius is going to be uh, two inches. At this point, this information is not going to appear in my um, in my schedule. To make it appear in my schedule, I need to come here and go to new parameter and go and create a shared parameter. And I can go and select that parameter is not existing, but I can edit my shared parameter uh, file from this location. So first of all, I'm going to create a new group that is going to be called piping. Oh, I had that already, sorry. There we go. I had created a group already. So in that group, in that piping group, I'm going to create my parameter. My first parameter is going to be called uh, cold water. Uh, yeah. Always be careful how you spell here because if you have a spelling error, it's going to carry through. Uh, again, the discipline is going to be piping. The type of parameter is going to be a pipe size. And I'm going to click OK. And now I have that as one of my shared parameters. And I'm going to create another parameter that is going to be uh, the sanitary diameter. And again, it's going to be a piping, and it's going to be again a. Uh, it's going to look at a uh, pipe at the pipe size. All right. So if I click OK here now, I need to uh, select this parameter and click OK. And now the parameter is in the parameter properties. It's still a type parameter. I'm going to say OK, and then the cold water diameter. I have to link them. But before I link them, I'm going, actually, I'm going to link them right away. So I'm going to say that the diameter is going to be the cold water uh, use times two. Uh, 
uh, and uh, yeah, that's working fine. And then I'm going to co create my other shared parameter and I'm going to go here and choose from my piping group this, uh, this uh, parameter that it was there already. And then I'm going to give it a dimension again through a formula that is going to be sunny, fairy, radius, times two. That should work. That is all nice and hunky uh, The next thing I need to do is connect them to connectors, right? So I'm going to come here to create a connector. In the connector, first of all, I need to define the system of the connector. So this is going to be a cold water connector. Then I need to make sure that I am going to define the connector dimensions through uh, the option of the uh, diameter. And I'm going to leave it that it's going to be placed on a face and I'm going to place it here in this location. And at the same time, I'm going to create another connector that I'm going to place in this location. I'm going to clean this one up in a moment. So this top parameter, it's going to be a uh, fixture units. Uh, the direction is going to be in. I don't need it to adjust for slope. It's going to be in the system classification uh, called water. I am going to um, link now the connector to the diameter here by using this associate family parameters. This is also the location where you associate uh, parameters that come from a nested family into the host family. And I'm going to choose the cold water diameter and immediately it picks up the size that it has to do. Here I'm going to change this parameter from domestic cold water to um, sanitary and it's going to be also fixture units. Uh, the direction is going to be out. Uh, I'm going to ask it to adjust. Uh, the fixture units is going to be four. I need to um, also associate that parameter to my uh, sanitary diameter. There it is. I didn't give this guy fixture units. Uh, at this point, this would be interesting if I'm connecting pipe into it, and that way I'm carrying the fixture units from the plumbing fixture through the pipe. Right now, this fixture units are not going to reflect in the schedule. But uh, at this point, I want to show you how these two parameters and this whole workflow that I just showed you will influence the schedule within a project. So I'm going to go and load this element into a project. I don't need to save it. And I'm going to uh, place a couple of uh, water closets here. And immediately, I'm going to go and create a uh, plumbing fixture schedule. And basically, I am just going to add to this plumbing fixture schedule the family, uh, the cold water diameter. Now, notice that now it appears in my schedule automatically in the project environment. Uh, down here at the bottom, I have my uh, sanitary diameter. This is the button that I was showing you before that allows you to create project parameters from within the schedule itself. Um, I can show you what the dialog box looks like in real life. It is the dialog box that I had before in my PowerPoint. Notice that this project parameter says that it can appear in schedules but not in tags. I don't need to create any more parameters. I'm going to click OK. and. This is how you uh, add a um, reporting parameter through a shared parameter and allow it to be shown in a um, schedule. And with this, I am going to go back to my beautiful PowerPoint and open up the uh, floor for any questions you might have.
Thank you, Sandra, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, let me go over the questions that we have. Um, okay, the first question is, I got a family from somewhere else, but the export option for the shared parameters is grayed out. Why does this happen? Um, awesome question, Juliana. And um, that happens because your active project does not have a shared parameter created, a shared parameter file uh, attached to it. And then that export option is not going to be available. It will only come available when you uh, create a shared parameter file in the project environment or in the family environment, wherever you are finding that export option grayed out. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, can I use share parameters to filter my schedules? Yes, yes, definitely you can. Um, I have seen it uh, done in companies that I have worked for where um, it gives um, the ability to um, filter out your schedules when you have a very busy model and keep them better organized. And that way, I mean, uh, especially if you have models that are multidisciplined, um, and uh, though having uh, shared parameters will allow you to assign to specific categories or to multiple categories will allow you to filter your schedules, absolutely. Thank you. And okay, as a reminder for everyone, if you want to learn any of these topics in detail, you can always take a custom training with Sandra. And we also offer group classes online. Um, I also wanted to mention our upcoming webinar on August 22nd, official 3D, civil 3D workflows, best practices. And then on August 29th, we'll have AC collection top tips and tricks for maximizing productivity. And then on September, we will initiate a tech series um, this one will be about Revit MicroCAD tools to boost your productivity on September 4. All of these at 1 p.m. just as this one. And if I don't see any more questions, um, here you have our contact information. If you have any questions or inquiries, we will also be sending you a thank you email and 